Well, with Sparky Pete in Liverpool in the International Science Museum, which also doubles as my mum's garage. And today I'm going to take you through insulation resistance fault finding. Now let's play, let's pretend for a bit. Um, let's talk about what kind of possible scenario this might be. Let's say it's a domestic rewire and on day one we managed to, along with other things, get the downstairs lights wired and connected up. Now, what you would do in that situation is you would actually do a little mini test on the lighting circuit before you connect it up. At a minimum, you're gonna do um, continuity protecting ductus, R1, R2. Uh, that's gonna give you polarity and also insulation resistance. When you do a test like that, don't be tempted to um, test the cable without having the CPC connected at the board because it's only then that other faults can reveal themselves that wouldn't if you tested the cable um, with the three conductors if it's a single phase circuit disconnected from the board. So that was it. So so day one, we've had the lights wired, we've tested them, we've connected them in. Uh, day two, we second fixed everything else and we've come to the point finally where we're going to do the, well, we've done continuity protected conductors, we would have done that up front first. Um, uh, ring continuity and now we're on to the uh, insulation resistance test. Now, um, Let's talk about the, well, the, the first thing to emphasize, it's a dead test. And um, in this situation, if you could isolate the supply to the board, then you would. You can see here, we've got open tails, you know, connected into the board. It's not often you're going to get a chance like that, where you've got a fully completed board with open tails that you can test to. Generally speaking, and let's be practical, generally speaking, um, you, you may be working on the... Um, the, the board with the, the the feed still in, possibly. So potentially up here, this could be live up here. And uh, we've got the, the load side of the board isolated. Either way, um, whatever's relevant, uh, which you should be competent to be able to decide if you're doing this kind of work, it's a dead test. And we've got the relevant part isolated. Now, if we talk about the setup, um, you might have watched another video about insulation resistance testing and I might have told you that uh, back in the olden days as I call them, um, Old Swan Tech 1982, they said lamps out, switches on. And what that meant was you know you, you had your, um, all your lamps out, light bulbs out and the switches were in the on position and there's a little um, sort of suggestion there as well that you would check around the um, the other, the strapper in a two-way system. Now, what, what we sort of say today is lamps, loads, and vulnerable equipment um, out uh, or dealt with in some way and switches on. Now, that switches on in this situation. If we're doing a global test, what a global test means is more than one circuit at once. If we're doing a global test, that switches on aspect that I've just mentioned is going to apply to those breakers. Um, you can see what I've done here is I've got the um, RCD uh, switched off and we're testing on the load side of that RCD, which means we're te not testing across the RCD itself. And as you can see, if I test the line conductor at this point, with all of these breakers in the on position, I'm obviously testing through to the three line conductors in that circuit. I mean, the neutrals are all connected together, aren't they? And the obviously the earths are all connected together in the main earthing tailor. Um, in another situation, say you were uh, fault finding on an individual circuit, are you going to have the breaker on then? Well, obviously not. So this is, this is why I, it, it's important for me to say, well, let's say what the scenario is. Because if you were, were um, fault finding on an individual circuit, obviously you're going to safely isolate that individual circuit and have that breaker off. So I think uh, what I've just said about the, uh, those things, it's important to get that firmly fixed in your head. So that's that, that's the setup. Lamps out, switches on. Just remember that and, and um, all of that, uh, what that implies. Um, if we talk about the meter, there's my multifunction meter. I'm going to put it on 500 volts. So the regs tells us that the circuit, for a circuit of this nature, it's a 500 volts, volt test voltage. So table 64 in the regs. You can check that one out for yourself if you need to. Um, and the way I've got it set up, and well, I'm going to set it up so that it's permanently working out the, the 500 volts. So to do that on this meter, you press the yellow button and the red one together, and that will permanently give you the uh, the 500 volt test voltage at the leads. So I think we're ready to go. Let's have a go. So let's go um, 
on this one, actually, let me dial it, dial it in. Light and neutral. Let's make a start with the testing. So let's start with, um, well, let's go back to earth. So what we're getting there is greater than 299. Let's go neutral to earth. And again, hopefully you can see that's greater than 299. Now if we go uh, line to neutral, oh look, issue zero. So that is a, uh, what's a short circuit, isn't it? A fault of negligible impedance between live conductors at different potentials is, according to the book, a, a short circuit. So we've got a short circuit between line and neutral. Now, if it involves the line conductor at all, so it's line to earth or line to neutral, we can use the relative breakers to, to isolate the fault. Now, I happen to know on this one without knocking them all out, but that particular fault is on this, what's indicated up, up on this board here as the, as the shower circuit. So I know if I knock that out and then I go line to neutral, I'm getting greater than 299. And just to kind of emphasize that, if I put that circuit on again, you know, zero. I could even do it the other way and I could knock off those breakers, if you understand what I'm doing here, and just go on the individual circuit and onto the neutral. And I'm getting zero. So, I mean, that, that'll be a typical thing in this situation. What, what that will generally be is um, a nail through a, a cable, typically um, floorboards, when you put the floorboards down, or um, cables compressed at the back of a, a metal box. That would typically give you a, a short like that, you know, a straightforward short. So, um, let's pick another type of, of fault, which is slightly more tricky. If we dial in a neutral to earth fault, and that's different. So if it uh, involves the line, we can use the breaker to isolate it, line to earth or line to neutral. We can use the breaker to isolate it. But if we've got a neutral to earth fault, the only way we can do that is to actually start taking cables out. Because obviously we can't just flick a switch and disconnect those individually or those ones there. So, so let's, let's see how that behaves anyway. So let's go line to earth. Neutral to earth. That's where we're getting our, our zero. And then line to neutral, we're okay there. So if we go neutral to earth, that's a straightforward neutral to earth, short. It's not a short circuit, it's because a short circuit means something specific. But uh, it's, it's a neutral to earth, short, that one. Now, I know with this um, particular rig, uh, where we're at with it, and I know that if I take out uh, this cable which it tells us is immersion heater that's old-fashioned isn't it immersion heater not many of them around now and what i'll do is i'll just reconfigure the leads there let's let's just go back to the terminals with that out i mean we can rule it in or rule it out can't we so if i go back onto the uh main earthing terminal there I just, there we go. So it's cleared. We can see that. It's cleared. On the other hand, if I then decide to go onto this cable here, we can see on that particular circuit then, um, neutral to earth on the immersion heater circuit, we've got a short straightforwardly, you know. And we saw that uh, that the that, that fault cleared with the, the neutral out of the the terminal so single fault to straightforward dead straightforward when we introduce combination faults that's an interesting one if i put those two on together what happens then is on the uh let's put the the um the neutral back in as well so in that situation with the neutral back in and our neutral to earth uh, faults actually on the rig. So there we go. So before it just had a, a fault line to neutral. Um, but here now, look, here now, 
we've suddenly got a line to earth fault as well. Now, the reason f for that is because with those two faults together, uh, we've got the um, the line to neutral fault of the of the um, the shower circuit that's on that itself. But because the neutral to earth uh, has a fault on another circuit, that fault obviously transfers to the shower circuit. If you're still with, you know, that possibly quite complicated. But um, single faults are easy, but. It's worth mentioning that was if you get a combo thing of those two, like a, a, a line to neutral and a neutral to earth, then it can be a bit mystifying because, uh, like I say, that one circuit apparently has two faults on it. Uh, uh, you might be tempted to think, um, but it doesn't. That neutral to earth fault is coming from another circuit. Now, I've spoken a lot there. That one might be too much information for you, that one, but hopefully you've got the, the main message. As always, you know, uh, constructive criticism welcome uh, because nobody knows everything and there's always more to say